In this video, we are going to focus on the SPF portion of the DMARC setup guide. So in this case here now, we're using example.com as our email domain. So in this example, it does show that SPF is enabled for example.com. However, we're still going to go through and say, pretend like as if we want to make changes to this record or wanted to determine what our new record could look like. So first off, what we'll do is click on SPF and then we will click on next. Here again, it's going to explain to you what SPF is. And as a reminder, so SPF stands for Sender Policy Framework. So this is what you're going to use in order to determine and define what is going to be the authorized mail servers that are allowed to send email on behalf of the organization's email domain. If the server is not defined in SPF, then those messages will follow whatever the DMARC policy is that you define. So it's important that you are aware of what servers you have or servers are responsible for sending mail and also if any third party servers are also being used for mail purposes. So at this point, we're still going to stay with example.com. We just press next. So the first part of the guide here is now to determine what are the servers. So if you do have mail servers, what would happen here is they would list the mail servers that are responsible for your particular domain. So in this example, example.com example does not have any mail servers. So most likely they use some third party servers. However, even if there's no MX records defined for, the, for that domain, it's still recommended to in incorporate this and say yes, that you want to add the MX tag. Why? Because in the future, if you do later on decide to add MX records for your domain, at least now you're covered with your SPF. But then again, you could always make the changes later. So in this case, we'll stay with yes, and then we'll go next. Now here, this is where you're going to find any servers that you may not be aware of or no, were not part of the mail records. So these could be anything that's internal to your environment. So example, we're, again, we're using example.com. So say we are using mail.example.com. That could be one, and it could be multiple ones. So it could be mail.example.com, and so on. So we'll press next. Now here is the next step is where you're going to find what are the external domains. So these are going to be things that are like your customer relations management systems, or maybe a cloud mail, mail provider, or some other cloud security provider. So for example, maybe you use Salesforce. So we could add in spf.salesforce.com. Now, if you do have third-party systems, it's a key to go and check with those providers to see if they already have an SPF record that exists. If so, just copy the domain from their SPF record and place it into here. We'll press next. So now here is what's the last section is going to find how strict the receiving service should be when those emails are received that contain SPF. So you do have four options. You have dash all, which basically means that only the domain's mail servers are allowed to send mails for this, for this domain. Anything else is prohibited. The soft fail with tilde all, which is recommended, is pretty much the same like the dash all, but this is where you're transitioning. So you want to use this as a safeguard until you have all the systems that you need into the SPF file or SPF record. Then you also have neutral, which is question mark all. This basically says that explicitly that nothing can be said without validity or can be completed without validity. And then you have plus all, which basically means that any host can send mail for the domain. This should never ever be used. Then we press next, and now we have our SPF record. So here, what says highlight, which I'm highlighting here, is your DNS rec the DNS record that you will insert into DNS. So you have options where you can copy it and then email it to your DNS provider or maybe your, the staff that handles your DNS server. And then that way you're creating your TXT record. Just note that this is what it will look if you own your own DNS server. In most cases, if you're using a third, prov third party provider, you may only need portions of this. If you have any questions, please feel free, feel free to reach out to Info at Global Cyber Alliance and we can provide any additional and further guidance that you may need. Thank you.